So, if you're talking about the best region in Smash Bros. Ultimate, you're either talking about North America or Japan. Hey, between the two, nobody's 100% sure on who's better, but everyone's taking a guess. After Smash Con and Evo, it's time for us to get into the mix too. If you want to start getting into the mix at your local tournaments or just beat up your friends at home, <laughs> we've got guides to help you get started with that too. These videos are all brought to you by ProGuides.com, one of the best places to level up your game. We've got more character guides and breakdowns from great players like Zero, as well as live coaching sessions. So, which region is the best at Ultimate? Good question. The answer kind of depends on how you look at the question. If you're looking for the region with the best player, well, that's NA because of MK Leo. But that doesn't ignore the other top players that challenge him. If you're looking at average level talent across the region, that might actually be Japan. But that ignores that the ultimate goal of a competition is get to the top. So we think that you need a mix of strong top talent and a really deep talent pool to be the best region. We're also looking at how things stand right now. Ultimate is just so young that it doesn't make a ton of sense to get all historical with our analysis yet. That means we're focusing on Smash Con, Evo, and some Umabura tournaments that took place in Japan. And no, we're not going to focus on the crew battle where Samsora got three stocked, okay? That's not because we want to cut North America some slack, it's just because it was in February. And in a game as new and quickly changing as Ultimate, that's basically ancient history, right? Plus, we want to keep the focus on this singles bracket. Singles gives us the best idea of competitive strength because sets are often best of five and players have room to adjust and counterpick each other. So we're not going to be using the PGR for this either. And that's not because we want to cut Japan some slack. It's because PGR's ranking system prioritizes players who attend a lot of big US events. Plenty of Japanese players can only make it out to America for S tier, so they lose a lot of potential points that NA players gain. And hey, you don't got to take our word for it, right? You can just look at the X factors on the PGR. The X factors compare a panel of pros rated the player to how the PGR algorithm rated the player. Almost every Japanese player had positive X factors, meaning the pros thought they should have been ranked higher. All right, so let's start the argument with the top talent. This is where NA really shines. If you're looking at international results, North America just plain beats Japan at the top level. NA has the consensus top four players in the world, all right? MK Leo, Tweak, Mars, and Simsora. Japan has players that could break into the top four, but they haven't yet like Zach Ray, Shutan, and Kamemi. At EVO, five of the top eight players were from NA, and three were from Japan. And Japan didn't get any players in the top four of EVO or Smash Con. On the other side of the Pacific, NA had three of the top four at EVO, and all of the top eight at Smash Con. The only counter argument that Japan has here is the Umabera Major in Tokyo. MK Leo didn't even make the top eight at Umabera, and the next best NA player there, Cosmos, got fourth. Umabera didn't even have any of the other best NA players like Mars or Tweak. It also took place when Joker was still a new character, and Leo didn't practice with him nearly as much. Even with Umabera, North America did much better at the top level of Smash Con and Evo, that it's pretty hard to argue against NA's top talent. Japan's got to fight back with death. Lucky for Japan, that's where they thrive. Japan has a bit of a reputation, you know, for having tons of skilled players that, that just make getting out of pools difficult for anyone not playing at the top of their game. So Japan really showed off their crazy death at Evo. A lot of their high-level players made pretty big upsets and on characters you don't really even hear about. Big shoutouts to Kep's Villager, reminding everyone of the danger behind those soulless eyes and that sinister smile. It wasn't just Kep's Villager either. Maud made Clyde look high tier by beating Dark Wizzy. Japan did great on the high and top tiers too. Shogun, Japan's best snake, beat Cosmos. Abandago beat Mr. R while Nietzsche and Kamame even scored huge wins on Mars and MK Leo respectively. All three players play a mix of strong characters like Mega Man, Wario, Pichu, Palatina, and Inkling. You know, when the dust settled, Japan made up nearly half of the top 25 at EVO. That's pretty impressive, guys, given that EVO is still an American tournament, and a lot more high-tier American players were still entering than high-tier Japanese players. By Smash Con, a lot of high-tier Japanese competitors had already returned home, but the players that stuck around didn't reach their EVO standards. Reito and Nietzsche both fell out of the bracket way earlier than expected. Kept and Zach Ray did pretty well, but Japan's depth wasn't as strong this time around. And that's a pretty big deal. Since NA has a clear argument for having the S-tier players, Japan's got to hit back with their A-tiers. At Smash Con, NA did better on the S-tier and the A-tier. Hey, that means we've got to give this round to NA. But don't think that this means the competition is over. There's still a lot of time in Ultimate's lifespan for Japan to train up and respond. And even now, it's a pretty tight race for the first place. And that's a good thing for Ultimate. Each region brings its own style and ideas to the table, pushing the meta even further than normal. 
like Goku and Vegeta. These two regions make each other stronger after every battle. Alright, alright, you know we had to at least get one anime reference in there before the video ended. 